So finally, I want to show you the new cutscene editor. But first, I have a cool little video to show you. We're receiving a transmission from the Bucephalus. Oh no. Are you all right, sir? Uh, how much did you have to drink tonight, sir? I don't like this. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you an idea of just how much fun you can have with the new cutscene editor. So the cutscene editor allows you to create high quality cutscenes using existing assets. And that part's really important. That last cutscene that we saw had no new assets other than the fun little song, of course. It is a visual timeline-based editor designed specifically for artists and level designers. So this is what a cutscene looked like in Wings of Liberty. Now, even though I put this slide together, I still have no idea which cutscene this is. As someone was nice enough to put in the comments that Rainer and Tychus are in this scene, but I have no idea what they're saying, how long this cutscene is, where it takes place, or, or anything like that. Uh, that. That's because we're looking at the trigger editor. Now, the trigger editor is great at editing logic but it's not great for editing cutscenes. It's not designed for that. For that, we need a cutscene editor. So the cutscene editor allows you to add and manage all of the objects in your scene, including models, cameras, lights, fog, paths, and a whole bunch of other cool objects. It is visually based and lets you see exactly where every object is at any given moment in time, and even lets you edit directly in the viewport. It has an advanced timeline for sequencing all of your events, including animations, sounds, and other events, and even doing some basic keyframe animation. And finally, it shows you exactly what the cutscene will look like when played back in the game. So here's a quick video of the cutscene editor in action. So we have here the Dota Victory cinematic, and there's still some temp art here, so bear with me. And all I have to do here is I can select Arthas and use the manipulator to just move him back and forth. And notice how he interacts with the light there. Now I can also scrub the timeline to see exactly how every object lines up on their paths and their animations. And now let's say I wanted to edit the camera and how it rotates around the scene. I select the yaw property here, add a new key to our new curve editor, and I can move the key around to change the shape of the curve and how it animates. And notice in the background how the camera moves around as I update the, the shape of the curve. Finally, I can move the cursor back to the beginning of the scene look through the director camera, which just says to play it back as if it was in the game, and see what my cutscene looks like. Now, one thing that's not obvious here is even though we created the cutscene with Arthas in the first place position, that's not always going to be the case. So using triggers, when the cutscene is playing back in game, we can substitute different models in different positions based off of gameplay. So finally, I have one more video to share with you here. This next cutscene uses a number of features, including lights such as omni lights, spotlights, environment lights. We use look at to uh, move the character's heads around and to do some cool bobbing action you'll see. Uh, we have attachments to help with positioning. Uh, we do animation blending, fading, some cool camera work. Keep in mind as you're watching this that there's absolutely no new assets in here. Uh, this is using only assets found in Wings of Liberty and you can even call this programmer art because I didn't even involve an animator when creating this. So without further ado, I give you a BlizzCon 2011 exclusive sneak peek at the cinematic ending of Heart of the Swarm. Thank you, and now I give you Rick. Hi, I'm Rick Gilland. Uh, I help the awesome artists on StarCraft II make even more awesome art. So, PC gaming has a rich history of mod making. We've seen the editor improvements and arcade to show our commitment to helping the mod scene flourish. We know our players are talented. 
we've seen maps like Defense of the Ancients and Tower Defense spawn entirely new styles of games. And to help the mod scene really take it to the next level, we're releasing the art tools for StarCraft II. You guys are awesome. So, I'm really nervous. With the art tools, you're going to be able to make entirely custom models. This means that you can make anything as grand as a total conversion to fill that minor art gap in your map. We've seen a really impressive map for StarCraft II that clones StarCraft Brood War, down to like weird AI problems with Zerglings, it's great. But at the end of the day, they still had to rip the top off the Immortal to make a Dragoon. And we'd really, really love for you to just be able to make that Dragoon. Also, we've seen models from World of Warcraft and Warcraft 3 pop up in StarCraft 2. We know you guys have ways of getting them in there, but sometimes they'll rip apart or the textures will get corrupt, or in the worst case, you know, other models around them start going crazy. With the real art tools, the same art tools we used to ship Wings of Liberty and are currently using to build Heart of the Swarm, there are going to be fewer bugs. It's going to have a better play experience. It's going to be easier to make, and we're going to be able to support it better. Together, we're going to be making better mods. So the package we're delivering includes an exporter for 3D Studio Max. With this exporter, yeah, we've been working on it a long time. So with this exporter, you're going to be able to make custom units, custom buildings, custom doodads. If you want, you can do foliage and spell effects, do a whole new thing other than size storm. If you're daring enough, you can even make custom cliffs for your entirely custom tile set. This exporter links directly with the cutscene editor that Matt showed earlier. So you're going to be able to export your model, instantly see your changes. And you can see what it's going to look like exactly in game in different lightings on different tile sets without having to load up your map. This is a big system, so we're providing more documentation. This documentation is going to include everything from tutorials to detailed tool breakdowns. And it's going to go even as far as covering systems that are maybe a bit opaque right now, like texture replacement in the animation prop system. Like I said, it's an intricate system. We know we're not going to be able to cover everything, even with good documentation. So we're going to provide example files. We're lo still locking down exactly what, but one of everything as best we can. Things from like a street sign that you knock over with physics to like a T 3D UI that comes in or big stompy mechs. You know, things we love on StarCraft. So now that we know roughly what this is going to include, let's take a whirlwind tour through the StarCraft II art tools. I've opened up 3D Studio Max here, and we're going to go to our example tutorial asset. This is our water bat, if uh, many of you are tasteless fans. So we're going to show you how to take this from a simple gray mesh, the simplest, simplest thing possible, to a living, breathing unit in StarCraft II. We'll show you how to set up the data so he'll be able to attack enemy units and hear, heal your own buildings, set up the materials so it lives correctly in the world. We'll go through and set up the attachment points and the selection volumes so your unit is indistinguishable from one of ours in performance and selection. We'll even go through how to set up the animations to work correctly so you know what you're doing from both sides, either the art creation or the map making, when you call like a stand ready cover. Right? That's a weird name, man. And so we'll go through everything, even like making it so you can lay down the insult when you want to slash a dance. So, Maybe you learn better from example and not tutorial. So let's open up everyone's favorite lab tech, Stepman, here. So with example files, you can see how we set them up. So you'll be able to know how we set up a story mode asset in our like, high quality shaders, or maybe you just want to fool around and see what it's like to do some modeling. So in this case, Stepman's been drinking maybe a few too many of those Blizz Colas around his bandolier. We'll fatten him up, and the only polite thing to do is make sure his clothes at least still fit. So we'll open up the export floater here, which is one of our tools and kick it over to the cutscene editor. I've preloaded it with the old stem for comparison and we can see pretty soon that it's going to flag us down to say, hey, this high quality asset with all sorts of stuff is ready to go. <laughs> so this setup works really well if you've got two monitors. That's what we do in house. Uh, you can just have it on the side and just keep sending it over and see what it looks like. He's fat. Awesome. We did it. <laughs> so maybe you're more creative and you want to do something entirely owned your own, like this sweet tomatoling I've got here. So we're still hammering out the details, but the basics of it are you export it into your mod, and then you fire up StarCraft II. So I'm going to spare you the load of the map, but we're going to jump into something I call the Salad Temple. And we can see that there's so many tomatolings just pulsing with tomatoey goodness. They live and walk around just like any other human in StarCraft II. 
And then we look down, and we see there's some Marines standing at the edge of our creep. How dare they? So we'll send in the tomato links to season them up, and our Zerglings are hungry for battle, so they're gonna charge in. They're gonna go, nom, 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 nom. Delicious. These tomato links have done exactly what we wanted them to do. They've shown us how to use the StarCraft II art tools, and they've taken out some Marines while they're at it. So I'm glad they've taken their bow. So, we're delivering a lot of power with the StarCraft II art tools, and we're looking forward to seeing you go forth and make awesome experience. Make something epic, just like we love to do here at Blizzard. 